I want to this evening as we begin this um, Wednesday night service um, slash study, I just want to thank everybody for, for being here at Highest Praise tonight and for those that's viewing us live. Um, we thank you for tuning in and invite you to come join us at Highest Praise. Um, we believe in the Word of God. We believe in teaching and preaching the Word of God. And we believe that the only way we're going to make it is through the Word of God. And, and if you're looking for a church that believes in that, we would love to truly have you. Amen. Um, I want to talk about something a little bit different tonight. Um, I want to, um, actually, I'm going to go in the book of Revelations tonight. I want to, in fact, I'm going to be in Revelations chapter 1, um, beginning in verses 4 through 7. Now, this is uh, something I want us to understand because so many times uh, the, the message is actually is, is about being washed in the blood of of Jesus, the blood, and what the blood represents, and what the and and how important that that is. In fact, the effects of the cross is so important that it has remained through the ages, and we must understand that we have got to have the cross in order to have any concept of Christianity at all. The Word of God tells us that. See, see, John was placed in, ex in, in, in exile in Revelations for his faith in Christ. In fact, long after Calvary, Calvary message of the cross, it still remains. But John was delivering a message to the seven churches. And he was delivering this message because he wanted to remind the seven churches of the cross. And this is where we're going to see it in Revelations chapter 1, beginning in verse 4. Because... John wanted to um, remind the church because we get away from the cross. We get away from what the cross is. Look, without the cross, there is no salvation. Without the cross, there is no hope for none of us. Amen? Now, I want to just follow along with me in, in Revelation chapter 1, beginning in verse 4. John, to the seven churches which are in Asia, grace be unto you and peace. From him which is, and which was, and which is to come, and from the seven spirits which are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, and the first begotten of the dead, and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us, and washed us from our sins in his own blood, and hath made us kings, and priest unto God and his Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. And verse 7 says, Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so, amen. Um, I, I just The reason why this is important is because... So many times we've tried to change around the Word of God so it's going to um, be something that, that makes us feel good and, and it takes away what death and blood represents. Um, John was reminding the church that the blood is very important in our salvation. And that's, and that's why washed in the blood is going to be so important because uh, when John reminds these churches, I want you to notice how his... Prophetic work begins with the cross and the resurrection as he spoke of in verse 4. And any church that forgets the cross has lost their message. Why? Because preparing to understand prophecy begins with Calvary, with the cross. We must understand um, what the blood of Jesus represents. In fact, in verse 5, he said, unto him that loved us. So first thing we must understand that those that are washed in the blood are washed ones, are loved ones. In other words, the bottom line of it is, he said, unto him that loved us. Who loved us? Jesus. The cross says that God loves us. You know, when I think about all the attacks and the battles that were going on in our mind, I want to relate this to help you understand something. Satan is all about the, uh, getting you to doubt what you already know. If he can get you to doubt, how many of us have had times when we've said, you know what, man, you know, 
I can't be saved and be going through this, or I, I, something must be missing, and, and I wonder if I'm saved if I'm fighting these battles. A lot of people, Satan, don't, Satan wants you to doubt in your mind what he's all, God has already done. Listen, you'll never be good enough. None of us, including myself, will ever be good enough. It's what Jesus did that made you who you are. So no matter what Satan does, if you just can stand up after your battle and say, okay, I lost this battle, but regardless of the battle, the victory has already been won. No matter how many times I fall and get up, the victory has been won. Jesus has already won that. And to him that loved us, the cross says God loves us. Romans 5, 8. And I want you to look at Romans 5, 8 with me tonight. But God commanded his what? Toward who? All right. He, all right. In that while we were yet what? Christ died for who? Okay. Is, see, so washed people are those, those loved ones. The cross says that God loves us. Okay, let me ask you something. Anybody messed up today? Okay, anybody had a thought that didn't line up with Jesus? Anybody had a thought you might even... Satan, look, Satan is not going to have pity on you. If he can get you to receive a thought, and, and if he can get you to act on it, he's going to say, see, if you really were saved... You'd have never, ever done what you did. Why is he saying that? He's getting you to doubt what's already been done. And you, look, if, if, if you've lost it today, if you've messed up today, guess what? God still loves you. The Bible says, and we just said in Romans 5, 8, we need to understand what he said. He said, but God commended his love toward us. Christ died for us. While we were yet sinners. Look, we're sinners saved by what? What does that mean? It means simply nothing you did. You just have to accept it. So listen, when we mess up, and I keep going back to this mind thing, when we mess up in our mind or, or Satan trips us or we stumble, and, and then if we get back up and say, well, man, I... If, I'd have, if you'd have had Jesus or if I'd have had Jesus, I wouldn't have messed up. Is, is that true? You've got Jesus, whether you mess up or not. Because he died for you while you were messed up. So, and, and, and the only difference between then and now is you've been born again. And when you're born again, means you've given a new birth. And that new birth means that what that, that flesh that you were born into sin, you've been reborn into Jesus. So that means that you the, the battle is still there. You're going to still fight the same battles, but you got someone in your corner now that's going to fight with you. What good is it going to do is to say, okay, all right, I, if I'm born again, I shouldn't have to be fighting these battles. Well, if that's the case, why did Jesus even die for you? Being born again means you're going through the same battles, but you, you've gotten a way to escape, which is Jesus. What does that mean? It means you're going to go through these battles. You're going to go probably more battles you've ever gone through. But the blood of Jesus covers all your sins. And you've got, you've got to understand that. See, when you wonder if God loves you, you need to consider John 3.16. Put that up for me, John 3.16. Everybody knows this. We, we, we've beat this in our heads for hundreds of years that God so loved us that he gave his only begotten son. You know what, John 3.16, but he, he says that, that whosoever believeth in him it's not going to perish. Perish from what? Perish from sin. Not perish from hunger or sickness. Perish from sin. Perish from the thing that Jesus died to set us free from. But have everlasting life because, see, whenever we accept the blood of Jesus, whenever we understand what the blood of Jesus had to do, listen, God did not have to send his only begotten son to be completely mutilated 
on the cross. There was no reason he had to. He's God. He could have found a million other ways to rescue us. But he chose to cross because he knew as in the flesh that the blood would be the significant part in our cleansing. Here's an example, not to go off on a, on a tangent, but whenever someone has issues where they've lost a lot of blood, the first thing they do is give them blood. Why? Because without it, they can't make it. See, Jesus shed his blood because he knew that was the only way that we can make it. So we accept that, and that blood is so important. We are washed from our sins by the blood of Christ because why? The Bible says it plain as day in Hebrews 9, 22. Listen to this, church. And almost all things are by the law purged with what? Blood. Whose blood? And without, listen, and without the shedding of blood is no remission. In other words, without the blood of Jesus, there is nothing. See, all things are purged by, by the blood. And, and, and that blood is still, the blood of Jesus is still there. Why, why is it going to purge us if we're not going through something to purge us from? Why do we need to claim the, look, if, if anybody messed up today and say, well, I'm washed in the blood, but... Okay, if you're washed, you should be clean. No, washed in the blood means that no matter what you go through, it's already covered by the blood. So no matter what you're facing, no matter what we're going through, listen, Satan wants to doubt you to doubt you're washed. I'm washed. I messed up today, but I'm washed in the blood of Jesus. See, the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sin. Um, I think that was in uh, 1 John 1, 7, wasn't it? I keep going to scriptures, putting in the word. But if we walk in the what? Light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. Now notice what he says, and the blood, the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. But there's a part there that we need to break down and look real quick. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. So, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Listen, as long as you keep walking in the light, someone says, okay, if I'm walking in the light, what does that mean? You keep following Jesus no matter what you're going through. Don't misunderstand what this saying. See, if you're not messing up, why do you need cleansing? Why, why do you need cleansing from all sins if... Well, I'm walking in the light. I, I, I'm following Jesus. I'm not going to mess up. No. He is telling you right there that if you walk in the light, which you mean, who's the light? Jesus is the light. When you're following Jesus and, and you're going to mess, things, sin's going to still attack you. Satan's going to still attack you. But he says, as long as you're claiming me and don't deny me, as long as you keep Jesus in your heart, no matter what you're going through, he says, I'm, I'm here to cleanse you. I, I'm here to, to clean. See, see, we're living in a world right now that somehow or other people are saying, well, if you were truly saved, you wouldn't do this or you wouldn't do this. No, Jesus is saying, I'm here. If you keep, if you don't deny me. If you, look, Satan wants you to do something. You know what that is? Deny him. Deny Jesus. Well, I just, I'm not going to serve the Lord anymore. I'm just done with him. Satan wins. But as long as you keep claiming the blood of Jesus, no matter where you're going and what you're going through, he's there to cleanse it. Right? See, the blood of Jesus, is that, that's what it's all about. We must understand this one simple fact. There, if there's no cross, there's no cleansing. Some people say, well, we don't believe in the resurrection. Some religions don't believe in the resurrection. Well, guess what? You might as well go home. Because without the resurrection, there is no hope for us. Religious rites have no cleansing power whatsoever. 
And, and I was talking to someone about this. Listen, no religious rites have no cleansing power. Your denomination is not going to cleanse you. Your little books is not going to cleanse you. Only the blood of Jesus does the cleansing. Only the blood of Christ is the divine detergent that makes us clean. Divine detergent. That means that that, that blood of Jesus is the only thing. See, people are, are really out there on a limb with so many different religions that they claim can cleanse you. I, and, and please don't take this wrong. Everybody has different rituals they do. And some people believe in ritualistic Stuff to cleanse them from their sins. Well, go to 12 Hail Marys and so and so and, and you're forgiven. Absolutely not. The Bible says the blood of Jesus has already done it. You are already forgiven. You don't have to go ask him. You've already been forgiven. See, can somebody get this real quick? See, when, you, when, when, when we stumble and fall in sin... Need, you need to get up and say, I'm forgiven. Well, if you're forgiven, why'd you stumble and fall? Because I didn't listen to him. But you're not going to get me to go to him and, and ask for something I've already been given. Is Jesus going to go back to the cross every time you sin? Is he? He's already done it. Beginning in the end. He says, it is finished. What is finished? Everything that you will ever go through. So that blood of Jesus is so important because, listen, it, we already got it. And when we mess up, we need to get up and say, look, I, 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 I listened to a lie because I'm already forgiven. Satan is like, well, you need to keep asking forgiveness. No, you just need to receive it. Secondly, Verse 5 and 6, where we read in Revelations 1, washed ones are lifted ones. He said in, in verse 6, and hath made us kings and priests. See, isn't that kind of hard to accept? Th is that what the Word of God said? He said, listen, listen closely. He said, and hath made us kings and priests unto God his Father. All right, who's us? All right, let's be real. Okay, let's all get real. Thank you. It's supposed to be us. But let's be honest. When we mess up, what's the last thing we feel like? Kings and priests. Let's get real. I'm just, thank the Lord I'm saved. I'll just, you know, but see, that's the whole, who, who made you say that? Satan. Because he wants you to doubt your position in who you are. When he gets you to say, and hath made us kings and priests, you know, it's easy to it's easy if we gotten up here on a Sunday and have have a hallelujah shouting, anointing, talking in tongues, and everybody's running and screaming, I'm king and priest, glory to God, thank you, Jesus. And everybody's running around and having the fit. Amen. We'll do it. But let us fall in a ditch. Satan's saying, got you in a ditch. What are you now? See, we need to have enough guts to say, it don't matter what you do to me. I'm not the problem. See, the problem is you believing. See, I already am. He's already done it. I still am part of the kings and priests because God's already done it. The, G the blood of Jesus has already took care of it. I might not act like one, but I am one. Hey, see, we've been lifted. That means when kings and priests, that means it's a symbolic saying that we've been lifted from rags to riches. But see, we've been lifted because of nothing we did. It's because of what Jesus did. It's because of the blood of Jesus. We've been exalted from peasants to princes. But, and, but listen, it's not nothing you've done. And, and if you're waiting to get on top of the mountain to claim who you are, you'll never get there. Listen, you need to claim who you are in the ditch. You know why? It's because Satan is banking on you to waller in your self-pity Oh, I'm just not worthy. I am, I just, I don't even know how I'm even saved. I don't even know if I'm going to heaven. I, I'm just a, I'm just a wreck. 
Satan is just feeding you all that, that garbage. See, you need to sit back and say, whoa, I am a blood-bought child of God. That means I'm king and priest. That means I've been set free and delivered. And you might, take, you might be controlling this world, which the Bible says he is. But your flesh is what he's trying to control. And listen, your flesh, you're still in. But you're born again, so you have the Holy Spirit that he can't control. So we have that battle going on. And listen, we can always have that battle going on until we glorify our body. So don't be shocked at what we're going through, but don't let Satan rob you of who you are. If someone, um, if someone goes out and they're saved, and, and, and Satan, does Satan have a limit on how much you mess with this thing? ha, <laughs> ha. If you don't believe me, ask young people with drugs and alcohol and suicide. Look, they, and here's what we love to say. Well, if you were a stronger-minded child, you would never fall into this temptation. Let me tell you something. Satan is the prince of the powers of the air. Heavenly places. Satan is not chump change. He will mess you up. He will carry you further than you ever wanted to go. And whenever you crack a door, he'll tear you down and he'll beat you down to the ground. And if you try to come out of it, which you will because Jesus made a way, and, and if Satan cracks a little door in that mess, he will send seven more demons worse than the ones you just got rid of. He'll keep doing this more and more. And But listen... His whole purpose is getting you to doubt and, 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 and give up. Do you know why people commit suicide? Because they give up. I can't do it no more. Anybody ever just gotten to a point sometime in your life said, I just can't handle this no more? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Let me tell you, I've seen times in life I'm like, Lord, look, what's the use? And, I, and uh, you say, no, not a preacher. Let me tell you, if he's got anything about him, I'm going to tell you what, he'll tell you to straight up. We fight battles. And Satan is all about trying to get you to give up and quit. Listen, when people commit suicide, it's because they, sometimes it's a mental thing. That can happen. But a lot of times Satan convinces them, you're no good. You'll never amount to nothing. You're not saved. You just ought to go ahead and end your life right now because you're just a waste of time. You're hurting everybody around you, and you'll never amount to nothing. See, Satan, if he can convince a mind of the worthlessness, then he wins. But if I just can convince you the, the blood of Jesus has already established who you are. And there is nothing Satan can do to rob you of who you are. The only thing that can rob you of who you are is if you doubt who you are. Do you doubt you're saved? You can't doubt it. Well, I don't, I don't act like it. It doesn't matter what you act like. It matters what Jesus did. John 3, 16, that whosoever believeth. You, listen, if you're dying, listen, if, if you're dying in your sins and you feel like your sins is destroying you, listen, Satan is putting all this out there for you to doubt who you are. Listen, I don't care what he does to me, I'm saved. I don't care how bad he beats me up, I'm saved. I don't care how many times I fall in the ditch, how many times my mind is attacked and beat down, I am a child of God. Bought by the blood of Jesus that covered the multitude of sins. And listen, it's over. So, but listen, well, pastor, why do we fight the battles? Because you're still here in the flesh. I, I, I wish people would grasp this. Paul said... He said, please remove this thorn in my flesh. Listen, how many of us got some things we'd love for God to remove? Come on, let's get real. I, you know what I say? God, I got just one. I just got a few things. If, if you'll kind of get them out of the way, I believe I'd be a walking, talking saint. 
I believe I'd be on the top. But think about that just a minute. Paul had to live with the flesh. The thorn was in his flesh. And he said it was demonic. My point is this. As long as you got this flesh, let me go on and tell you. It's going to beat you and beat you and beat you and beat you. But listen. Greater is he that's in me, which is the Holy Spirit, than he that's in the flesh of the world. So listen, when you feel like, when someone says, look, I just can't make it no further. I, I look, I, I, my flesh is, is weak. But let me, say, you just say, but look, what's in you? He can't take away from you unless you give it to him. The man on the cross. He said, thou shalt be with me in paradise. Why? It's because he believed. He believed. And when you do that, see, listen, we need to tell people, say, listen, you, you, Satan wants to rob you. See, the cleansed people are talking Talk about are, are lifted up for divine service. Kings and priests. That means we're no longer walking around broke, busted, disgusted, um, defeated Christians. When he says we've been made, he's made us kings and priests. That means we have, an, we have a position and, 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 and we have a divine service. What's our divine service? Let's see what our divine service is. Does anybody know? Tell everybody about Jesus. Divine. If someone comes up, you say, man, I saw you mess up bad today. You can't be saved. I said, yes, I am. I said, in fact, I'm forgiven. I claim the blood of Jesus. Yeah, but you're not perfect. Yeah, but that's why I claim the blood of Jesus, because he is. See, if you need to tell that person, say, look, and if you knew Jesus, you're still going to fight your battles, but you're saved. See, heaven and hell, it's, we are, have a divine purpose of lifting people up and telling them about Jesus. See what God did with a few fishermen? Good Lord. He made them the key people in establishing his church. Why? Let me tell you why. Every one of the disciples that died, they died believing. Their flesh was weak, but they died believing. Do you know what Satan's going to do to those that's left behind? He's going to go right after them. Because all he wants you to do is deny Jesus and accept him. And he's still doing the same thing right now. If he just gets us to deny Jesus and accept him, he wins. He took these few people and he changed the whole world. Those washed in the blood of Jesus are exalted from sin to divine service. Our future is as bright as the promise of God if we just keep our eyes on the mark. See, uh, they have been delivered from the limits of time to eternity. Church, how long are we going to live? Okay, so it's the blood of Jesus that causes that to happen, right? Right? For wash people, the sky's the limit and heaven's ahead. And, and, and we don't need to get our eyes off of that. Satan, you know, I know y'all don't fight the battles that I fight. Everybody's got their own battle. Amen? Come on, church. We all got stuff. I even told my wife today, I told her, I said, honey, I fight battles that only God knows. Because only God. But listen. The Bible tells us something. I don't know why the Lord just put this in me to say this to you. But um, he says, uh, you know, talking about thou shalt not lie, right? Okay. Um, have you ever thought that you were, um, by not telling God something, that you were keeping it from God? God wants you just to be honest. See, if you, if, see I, I learned something, guys. God says, I made that commandment so you wouldn't lie to me. I, I said, what do you mean? He says, nobody will know you like I know you. 
because I created you. He said, I just don't want you to lie to me. What did Adam and Eve do? Lied to who? And look what happened. Do you know what God is saying to us right now in church? He is saying, I, and, and, and I get this, Satan wants me to be so embarrassed by what I do that I'll try to lie to God. Do you know what I do when, when I have something go wrong? God, you know what I just said or what I just thought or what I just did. I'm not even going to make no bones about it. You already know. See, God don't want me to lie to him. We lie to God whenever we try to cover it up. Let's all get real. Have we ever told anybody, anybody all the truth? You know why? Because man won't understand. But God does. And I want you to understand this when we look at this. See, we got to understand something. We got to realize this, that this divine service that we're talking about, about these washed ones and, and the no limits on us, means that we got to realize that we got to trust in God and not let Satan deceive us into doubting that we can go to God. Satan is, 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 is crazy. And I'll probably get pounding on for that, but that's okay. He's crazy because, see, God already knows everything I'm going to do. And, and I am not going to let, no matter what Satan does to me, I'm not going to let him convince me not to tell God, is that the dumbest thing you've ever heard? Think about it. Well, I don't believe God would be pleased. God's going, I already know. Right? How many of us have done things and we think, well, God, uh, boy, I hope God don't get mad at me. I, I, I can't say nothing. Let me tell you something. God knows it all. And he just wants us to understand that. And whenever we do that, then we understand the significance of this. This last thing in verse 7 their focus now is on the future. In verse 7, see, those washed ones are those looking ones. In verse 7, he said this. He says, Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall, what? See him. And they also which pierced him. This is important. Those which pierced him. Not talking about the one that stabbed him. He's talking about those that pierced him, the, those that turned on him, those that rejected him. And all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. See, the, the bottom line of it is, is, see, he made that statement in here because there's a lot of regrets uh, uh, that, that's going to be in people's lives that have chose not to serve the Lord. But he said, he said, when he's, he said, when, when I cometh with the clouds, right? He said, everybody's going to see me. The lost, the found, every eye's going to see him on that cloud. He said, and those that have not accepted him, guess what they're going to do? They're going to see him. But what about those that know him? Can I go on and tell you, he died humiliated on the cross. But when he comes back on that cloud, let me go on and tell you, he's going to make every one of them demons in hell look at him. Because everybody don't have Jesus has demons. Amen? He's going to make every one of them look at him. And guess what they're going to get to see? Those that persevered. Those that claimed the blood of Jesus. Those that, that never, no matter what they went through, didn't give up their belief and fought the good fight. Amen. Paul didn't run a horse race. Paul was talking about the good fight, that fight of what you and I fight every day. Paul was talking about sin, temptation, the lust of the flesh, the pride of life. He's talking about all this mess that is attacking our what? Flesh. We fight the good fight when we don't give up and quit. Amen. Regrets are behind and rewards are ahead. The Lord returns. Return is their blessed hope. In Titus 2.13, I think that was the scripture I was looking at as I bring it to a close. Titus 2.13 says, looking for that what? Blessed, not just hope. Blessed hope. 
and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ. Isn't that awesome? See, look, we, are you saved? Amen. Let me don't put this to anybody listening to me on that thing back yonder. <laughs> if you ain't saved, you're not going to be wanting to look up. Because, let me tell you something, if you're not saved, you're going to have major problems. But Titus told us, Look, we're looking for that blessed hope. Can I tell you something? I don't care whether they call us haters. I don't care whether they, what they call us. I call us saved. We're going to heaven. The rest of you got a problem. Right? See, my point in the, if we, we're washed in the what? And, and if we are washed in the blood, that means that we are secure. Amen. That means that no matter what happens, the Lord return is our blessed hope. How many of you can't wait for Jesus to come back? Amen. Amen. Me and John fuss over this all the time. I said, no, you're not going before me, and I'm not going for you. We're going to go together. Amen. Amen. I've never seen a couple fuss over who's going to go first. But the point being of it is, listen, church, we have that to look forward to. And I'm going to tell you, if you know anything about the Bible, as I draw this to a close, you better open your eyes and look. Because what's happening in Israel, what's happening in the nation, the Bible is being fulfilled. In fact, right now, more people are going to the Bible to see what's actually taking place in the world because they can't not prove it. This has been written, and it's coming to pass. I'm telling you, we better keep our eyes up looking. Amen? Also, too, see, our trials here um, cannot overcome. We can't overcome them without Jesus. And listen, trials here, I'll get this right, cannot overcome you when you keep your eyes on Jesus. Don't get your eyes on the problem. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Keep looking up and listen because Christ is coming back and the prize awaits every one of us that are awaiting him. So, in fact, the last scripture I want to share as I close this study tonight in Philippians 3, 13 and 14. Listen to what he said. Brethren, I count not myself to apprehended, but one thing, this, this one thing I do. Forgetting those things which are and reaching forth to those things which are before, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Now, anybody likes to break something down in closing, let me just break this real simple. If you read what I just read in Philippians, Paul wrote, Paul is telling us, he said, look, but those things which I do, forgetting, listen, brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do. This one thing Paul does. Forget those things which are behind. What does that mean? The sin. The met. You, how many messed up? Don't even raise your hand. Some of you listening. You probably have had a really bad day. Guess what Paul says? Forget it. See? Put it down. Anybody had a bad day at work? Put it down. Anybody lost your cool? Put it down. You know why? He said, and reach forth to those things which are before. He said, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling. Press means he is pushing. And what's he pushing against? Sin. He is pushing against Satan and all his demons. He is pushing against all this. Why? Because he knows at the end of that is Jesus. See, we need to tell people that they are washed in the blood. We need to let people know. See, ask people, have you been washed in the blood of the Lamb? And if they say, well, what does that mean? See, um, that means the washing away of your sins. When you accept Jesus Christ, you've got to accept the cross. You've got to accept that Jesus died on the cross for our sins. Amen? We need to quit sugarcoating the gospel and let people know without the blood of Jesus, there's nothing. Without the blood of Jesus, there's no hope. Without the blood of Jesus, there's no salvation. Without the blood of Jesus, I'm going to tell you, Satan wins. But if we believe 
in the blood of Jesus, then we're saved. In fact, everyone listening needs to understand something. Only way to be clean is what the Scripture says is you've got to come to Christ. Christ is the cleansing factor in your life. Without Jesus, nothing else will work. Amen. Amen. So as we close tonight, I just want us just to focus on what uh, they were telling us. And he was telling us in Revelations. John was telling us because we need to get back to the basic principles. I've, I hear so many people, ministers talk, and it's all about feel good, feel good, feel good. And there's nothing wrong with that. But boy, we've got to get back to some blood. Because Satan is running rampant and destroying every aspect of the Christian walk. We, de we need to get some blood back in the church. We need to get the cross back where it belongs. And we need to tell people by the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus. I know there was a movie that was, uh, used Christian movies to come on. And he, and, and he, you know how he warded off demons? He said, in the name, in the name of Jesus, I plead the blood of Jesus. And that's how that, you remember that minister? And he's an old minister. He was one of them old, them old ministers. Hellfire brimstone. He'd throw out the blood. In the name of Jesus, I plead the blood of Jesus. And he would do it. But you know what? Because the blood of Jesus is power. You know how I know it's power? Because without the blood of Jesus, you wouldn't be saved. If the blood of Jesus can save us from hell, it can do a whole lot more. So let's throw the blood back in it. Amen. Father God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, I claim the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, that you went to that cross, that your blood was shed for all our sins, all our healing. And Lord, also to set us free from the captivity of Satan and all his demons. So Lord, I just claim the blood of Jesus over every one of us here tonight for healing, deliverance, and restoration. Lord, I, in fact, I draw the bloodline Ooh, the bloodline of Jesus around us, our families, our children, our grandchildren, everyone, Lord, we just claim the blood of Jesus overnight for that, uh, for that healing and, and for their salvation. Lord, we just thank you for that precious blood tonight. And, and Lord, I, I always lift up a special prayer. Every need in this room, no matter where they are, no matter what their need is, I pray for healing, deliverance, and restoration. Lord, I thank you, Jesus, even just for myself. I thank you, Jesus, that your blood was shed, that all my sins are washed under the blood, and, Lord, that your blood is power when we claim it in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you.